definitely working. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. For those just joining us, this is our 2009 Chevrolet Trailblazer LT. This comes factory with a 4.2 liter Atlas inline six. Uh, this is coined the Amerabera. It sounds like a 2JZ, it's awesome, it's a sleeper. We've made it look like a Trailblazer SS. It's lowered two, two inches in the front, three inches in the rear on BMR springs with Trailblazer SS wheels. It has an S372 turbo, an Artec uh, performance manifold, a custom downpipe, uh, tile blow off valve and currently is not running an intercooler. It's just running meth injection uh, Currently with the weather being more favorable lately. I actually do want to take it to the track again The last time we took it to the track it actually did pretty well Uh, but the goal of today's video, it's not going to be a long one, but we are going to install this flex fuel sensor. So this is a factory GM flex fuel sensor. You can see it right there. It says GM. I will put the part number in the description below the video. Uh, now, these flex fuel sensors come male to male. As you know, a factory uh, fuel line has a female end and a male end. So you need to find a way to make both male ends connect. So I found this awesome fitting from Racetronics. It's about $12. This is a 3 8 to 3 8 female to female adapter. Now I'm hoping this is not too long, so we should be able to put this in line with the factory uh, fuel line going to the rail. And we are gonna wire this into the factory EC E67 computer. Uh, now the E67 computer has flex fuel capability on pin number five, which is not used on this. It is flex fuel. You just have to go in and turn the PID on. Um, so Jeremy has actually already sent me the tune with that function enabled. Once we get the flex fuel wired in, we will upload that tune. There's nothing different in the tune itself. Um, and then we'll be, able to, we'll be able to actually have flex fuel capabilities. This, now, what does this mean? Uh, as E85 content is not consistent across the board, sometimes you get E85, sometimes you get E50, sometimes you get E67. Who knows what it is, right? So, uh, and not to mention, I typically mix a couple of gallons of 93. Uh, on average, about two gallons of 93 for every 10 gallons of E85. Uh, but that being said, as the content changes, this flex fuel sensor will adjust uh, timing as well as other parameters to keep everything in the optimal, uh, I guess, parameters for whatever the fuel content is that the motor is seeing. And now that since it's in line and it's going to go right before the fuel rail, uh, it should be fairly accurate and it'll help us uh, pretty much maintain the uh, maximum uh, power and capability of the motor at all times. Um, so let's go ahead and Okay, before I go too far here, I wanna show you guys how this works in case you've never seen one of these adapters. So the adapter, the way it works is you have this little piece here, right? Which has that slot. Now that slot goes around this little lip here, right? And this is what locks it in place, it cannot move. As you thread it in to the, the main housing, right? There's two O-rings that are on the end and those O-rings, as you thread it in, pushes it in. And you just take a wrench and you just snug it up. You make sure that um, you know, it's not gonna leak. So I have this end on here. You can kind of see, uh, oh, just spilled some coke here. Not a big deal. So this factory fuel rail also has one of these lips like on there. So the other end goes there. I threaded it in. And I'm gonna thread this end in and then put the factory fuel line onto this. Now this doesn't need anything. It just clips right on. I do want to note though, so the factory fuel line on the Trailblazer had a little, little clip. It's right here. That clip 
sits on this bracket, this little hole, it's kind of hard to see because it's in the way. There's a little hole right here and it clips there. So this rail, the, the, the line sits behind the, the connectors to the computer when it's all plugged up. Well, this hose is only flexible up to right where that connector is. So I wasn't gonna have enough room to fit that flex fuel sensor in and get this plugged in. So what you have to do is you have to take this off of there. You have to pull all of the ECU connectors in and then move the line to the outside of these connectors and then you'll have enough space. And you'll see what I mean here in a second when it's done. All right, so I've never pinned out an ECU before, but on the non-used pins, there's this little plastic piece here. And I know it's really hard to see because my camera won't focus really, but you have to punch this out and you'll see it from the backside, like the wire, where the wire goes through. <laughs> there's a little install tool for this, um, but I don't have it. So I'm just using a pick. You have to punch this out prior to putting the uh, the wire through. Now, again, I mentioned earlier in the video that the flex fuel is pin number five. Um, that is on the blue connector there. And I'll show you a little diagram here. You can kind of see where it goes, but I'm going to wire in uh, the white wire from the pigtail here. So the good thing about the pigtail is there's only three wires. There's black, there's red, there's white. So black and uh, red are power and ground. Um, and then the white is the actual signal for the flex fuel sensor. Now for the power, I'm gonna draw off the same uh, 12 volt ignition source that I'm using to trigger the hob switch over there. Um, so I already have a piggyback fuse in here that runs over there. I'm just gonna tap into that and then I'm gonna use that for power. And for ground, I'm just gonna run it over to the, uh, the I may do the chassis ground or I might actually just put an eyelet and go straight to the battery since it's right here. Um, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, either way, I'm gonna wire it up now and then I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's all done. Okay, this white wire here, that is the wire for the flex fuel. I already put the blue cover back on so you can't see, but one way you can tell that you're in the right orientation, in this upper left-hand corner, there's a number 43. That's telling you that that upper left-hand corner is pin number 43. Down here, this bottom left corner is pin number one. So one, two, three, four, five, that's pin number five. That's how you know you have the right pin. Now, I would highly advise, based on my experience that I just went through, to buy the install tool to install this pin. I was using some picks and it was not fun and I would not want anyone else to, uh, to go down this path. So I'm gonna put this cover back on, get it all installed and then show you what it looks like in the tune with it running. Well, now we're running. It's super rich because it's actually correcting for this ethanol content right there you can see it's bouncing around the tune now will need, will have to be tweaked now that we actually know the ethanol content so uh typically we were running e85 but i'm not super familiar i can't tell you what these values mean all i know is it works you can see it fluctuating there i'll show you let me go ahead and turn it off but it is definitely working So I'll show you what I did here. Uh, like I said, the ground is going to here uh, where the other grounds go. Power, I have the power tapped off of the same power that's feeding the hob switch for the meth injection. And then the white we pinned to the pin number five. Uh, it doesn't leak. This Racetronics is, adapter is pretty awesome. I would highly recommend this. It's very clean. Some people like hodgepodge some things together to make it work. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we have flex fuel. We can uh, keep tweaking the tune. Uh, and once we get it right with the ethanol content, it'll run like top notch all the time. Really excited about that. Um, and then other than that, next up is really the intercooler, which is going to be a, kind of a challenge, but I think we can make it happen. So. Uh, thanks for watching guys. If you uh, not subscribed, please consider subscribing and uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. See you guys next one. Peace.